Hey y'all, good to see you here on the Mr. Dig channel. To say that it is busy down at the garden center is an understatement. It has just been insanity down there, man. People buying plants by the truckload, which is great, but I hadn't had any time to get uh, some good footage for you guys up at the landfill or any heavy equipment stuff. So it's about four o'clock here on a Friday afternoon. We're gonna jump on the four wheeler. Let's go up, see how everybody's doing, see what's going on. I think we'll go, probably go by the uh, Gringo Mulch and uh, Compost Yard first, because I hear the grinder running as we speak. And then I wanna go show you guys some future projects that I think are, I know are gonna be awesome once we get them started. So let's jump on the four wheeler. Let's go up there, see what's happening. Every time I go to try to film, uh, the wind's blowing 30 miles an hour plus. So, got my little microphone on. Hopefully, you guys can hear me right now. We'll be up at the mulch yard in just a second. Hopefully y'all, hopefully y'all can hear me. We still got the case rented. Obviously we went ahead and rented it for uh, another month because we've been so, so wide open busy. But they have really done a lot of, a lot of grinding, man. I'm gonna have to fly the drone for y'all soon and for my own self just to see how big of a dent we have made in the wood waste. But it's definitely changed up here. And I'm hoping we're gonna have enough wood to make it, make it through the season. We're just now in April and man, I tell you what, they have gone through some wood. And if y'all remember from the last video, we had some pretty sizable mountains of colored mulch over there and they have really eaten through some material. I mean, it's just been tractor trailer after tractor trailer going down the road, just hauling mulch. And we got the prototype sitting here. We're not running her today, but man, look at the difference in that little pile of wood versus what it was just uh, two weeks ago. They have really eaten through some material. I am just, uh, I am impressed and, and a little bit scared at the same time, just because we're still so early in the season. And wow, they have gone through some wood. Got a nice, big, pretty, pile of compost screened up. It's been moving real well along with the topsoil. All, all the things that you know you can attribute to spring and people being out in the yard working your topsoil, compost, anything to do with, with yards and landscaping. Obviously that stuff uh, is it's the time of year to move that type of material. Let's go over here and uh, get a little bit closer look on the MC266 and See what our, our actual stockpiles of mulch look like. The red still looks okay. Got a big dent in it. Cherry brown, this is our most popular color right here. We ain't got a Probably two load, two tractor trailer loads of it left. Black looks decent. And I think they're making more black over here or either cherry brown. Let's go see. Okay, this over here is gonna be another pile of brown. They just uh, left what we did have in a pile right over there in the center. So they're gonna make up, or already have made up quite a pile a brown right here. But I'm telling you, the way this stuff has been going out, in fact, there's another truck right now to pick up some. The way this stuff's going out, we just really are struggling just, just to keep up. Again, good problem to have, but we need everything just to keep going as it is right now. Minimal breakdowns, and uh, all the guys have just been killing it up here so far this spring. But let's go right over to 
uh, close to the laying field now. And let me show you guys something I got pretty exciting. I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna implement here very soon. Well, y'all had to jump off the four wheeler real quick because I saw our buddy Luis over here doing something. I th honestly, I thought you were working on a transmission <laughs> when I when I came by. But we're going to experiment a little bit. So obviously we're over here where we make the blocks. And I bought these forms off of an auction a few years back. And so it makes a, uh, a bird bath. Or is it a fountain? A, fa a fountain or bird bath? Yeah. I think it's a fountain because that's the top. That's the top tier, the bottom tier, mm -hmm. and, and then the base. Yeah. So you're going to experiment a little bit, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Well, good luck. We'll see how see how it turns out. Maybe we can start selling fountains yeah, next. I, I, I never I never do this, but I want to try. With yeah. How oh, come on? I want to try it too. You know. Also, we got that big vibrating table. Oh yeah, it's over, over there. there. Yeah. That. But we ain't got no power over here. No, not yet. No, we're gonna get some power over here somewhere. I have to run it from the sand plant maybe. Get some power over. I got a big old table that uh, vibrates. So when you pour the concrete into your molds you can shake it down all right well good luck sir we just wanted to stop and say hey i was going to see what what transmission you was working on <laughs> all right see you later buddy well they got our sprinklers working back to for the dust control didn't they and then we got somebody over here on the 955 so i guess they got it got it fixed for all of you guys who were asking about the 955 I, I honestly don't know what uh, what happened to it when me and Aaron were looking at it the other day but evidently it wasn't anything too bad they got it fixed up and man they done sold that whole big old y'all remember that big old uh, pile of topsoil that Aaron had up here just a few days ago it's already gone and we're having having to make more such as spring This is one of the other reasons I wanted to drive the four-wheeler up here because we got so many dumpsters that are, some, some of them are ours, which belong to upstream recycling, and then some of them belong to other customers, and they're just storing them here. But we're going to have to move them soon because I want to get this bad boy up and running. So this is a sorting line. It's an old one that I found years ago, and uh, picked it up at a, at a pretty good price. But what happens is we can take waste that needs to be recycled, dump it on the conveyor down there, and then we can hire folks to stand at each one of these uh, sorting stations and pull out you know, whatever, whatever we're after, whether it be wood, plastic, cardboard, what have you. And they can sort it. They then drop it down these bins and it'll go to wherever it needs to go to. So I went ahead um, a few years back and poured a concrete pad just to set it up here and at least make an attempt to get, get started with recycling. But something really cool has happened lately. I've got some companies that are now interested in recycling their C and D material. We do it on a very small scale uh, in the landfill for folks that are, are doing a lead, as leaders in energy efficiency design. We'll sort through the material there on the tipping on the tipping floor, and recycle those materials and uh, offer them the the proof and the paperwork and documentation they need to then get their tax credits or however that works. I'm not sure about that part, but I'm very excited to finally have some interest from folks that want us to recycle their material. And if you haven't watched any of my videos in the past, the reason we're not actively recycling everything is because it's cheaper to landfill it versus recycle. So we're gonna, we're gonna be at, at least triple the uh, tonnage rate, which I think we're around 35 bucks a ton for C&D material coming in. We're gonna be, you know, upwards of 100 bucks in order to recycle that material. That's because you have to have, you know, specialized equipment, we have to hire more people, and then once you do segregate the materials out, they have to go to a baler, they have to go to even more equipment to be able to 
process the material. But I am super happy because if you have been watching my channel for a while, you know it drives me insane that we have to landfill as much material as we do. And it's just because as of right now, as I've said, um, you know, just a while ago, it's cheaper to landfill it and people usually are gonna choose the cheaper option unless government or unless government steps in and says, hey, you've got to recycle this stuff or the some of these newer companies like the ones that have contacted me are environmentally conscious and they, you know, don't mind paying extra to recycle it. So it's so exciting to me that we finally might be able to get this thing up and running. So we'll have to, of course, get all these dumpsters out of the way build us a uh, somewhat of a, a structure around here. I think what I'll do, we'll move the dumpsters, pour some concrete, maybe use some of our retaining wall blocks back here to build our walls, and then put us something, um, something like a clear span building back here. Just, uh, we just need somewhere to stay dry, keep the equipment out of the weather, even though it's been sitting out here for quite some time. Uh, just need a house, you know, also to keep windblown litter down to a minimum. But I am just beyond excited. Now, this is just in the beginnings of talks. This is not a 100% for sure thing, but at least now we have got interest and that's just wonderful. So hopefully we can continue on down the road with these companies and, uh, and actually make this thing happen. But wouldn't that be so cool, y'all, if we could get this thing up and running Dump, take a excavator, dump the trash here. Probably gonna need us a new belt. This, uh, this belt right here has seen its better days. But then that trash just come up here, go on this nice wide belt, have some good folks standing up here picking material. And I chose this spot right here to pour my concrete slab because I'm hoping that we, maybe we can use gravity and the terrain change to our advantage. And maybe, you know, for example, cardboard will go in this chute. Maybe it can gravity feed down to a baler. That's where uh, upstream started right there in that old greenhouse frame. So y'all know I have a gardening channel too and plants are my passion. That was one of my, that is my first actual greenhouse that I ever built to grow plants for sale. And then that didn't work out so hot. So we actually, uh, that's where me and Zach, my business partner with Upstream, started recycling. Right down there, we used the old greenhouse frame. Of course, the hurricane came through not too long ago and ripped all the plastic off. But we would dump our cardboard in that old greenhouse. We've got an old vertical baler that doesn't even work anymore. We would uh, put the cardboard by hand inside of that baler. And then we had this stupid little Toyota forklift, gas powered, had a clutch on it. I don't know what the deal was with that. We used to get stuck down there all the time. It was just a humble beginnings to say the least, but it's grown into the, the company that it is now. But that's kind, of the, that's kind of the backstory on Upstream. But let me jump back to what I'm talking about now. I'd like to use this space to gravity feed down. Uh, we've already got the powers, we, or the power ran. We've already got a good bit of concrete poured down there, so I think it would be the ideal spot to do some recycling activity. And uh, the landfill is right there, so it would be easy to divert the trucks that want to recycle over here, dump on the pad, feed it onto the conveyor, sort through it, take it down there, and process it. It's definitely gonna be some, some work, but I know with the crew we've got, we can get her up and running. This is a diesel powered unit as it sits right now. This is a Dobstat brand, the same um, as the Trommel screen that we saw a while ago with the 955 Hyundai over there screening topsoil. They were, I actually bought them together and they use the Trommel screen to uh, get out any soils and dirt and small um, particles. And then they would go from the Trommel directly onto the the uh, sorting line right here. But yeah, she's definitely, definitely not gonna be uh, a turnkey operation, but at least she's at least set up over here and has a home and we got, I think I poured this concrete a foot thick. And then, uh, you know, whatever the guys 
don't pull off up top in the sorting stations will come off this end here and it will be more than likely waste, but hopefully minimal that will need to go to the landfill. But pretty dang cool. And you know, the other thing I would really like to do with this y'all is have Aaron convert it from a diesel powered um, conveyor belt system over to electric. We just, we've got plenty of electricity down there. I ran some major electrical. There's the old balers that we used to use, me and Zach. Well, we've got plenty of power down there, plenty of juice. We just have to run us a line up here. But at least we do have a diesel motor. Um, I have to go find it. <laughs> but we do have a diesel motor to power this thing just to get us started. Let's see, here she is. Nothing major. Just a little small diesel engine. All it does is just run a conveyor belt. So we can probably get her back up into purring and at least get this thing started and at least begin the recycling and make sure that it's gonna work and that uh, both parties are, you know, us and the companies, make sure it's working for both, both uh, teams before we make a lot, super large investment to, uh, you know, just convert it over to electric to build a big building and that type of stuff. So at least we have got a, um, a starting point. And uh, I think that if done right, then maybe this could grow into, uh, you know, us being maybe a flagship C and D landfill of the Southeast uh, to, to really promote recycling, get more people on board, but it ain't, it ain't gonna be easy. But if it was, you know what? Everybody would be doing it. But man, this just uh, made my day when I talked to those companies here and uh, the amount of interest that they have. I think this really could be a cool starting point for us, but appreciate you guys watching. It's almost quitting time. I'm parched. I'm gonna go check on dad, get me a cold beer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate all your comments, man. It, it really means the world to me. Y'all checking on Pop and just saying hey to me, telling me where you're from, what you wanna see, all that good stuff. I love to get your comments. So drop me some below, hit that thumbs up for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next video.